Thank you for listening to my podcast. Like my page on Facebook for daily inspirational quotes with pictures from Indian country and for other podcast interviews with successful native or indigenous people. Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining me on 21st Century Native Leaders. My name is Peter Desu III, and I am here with Amadio Wanika. Amadio is originally from Fort Defiance, Arizona, but currently lives in Cedar City, Utah. Amadio is a freestyle animation dancer. He has been featured on Stage 49 at Gatherings of Nations in the past, and is going to be featured again this coming year, 2018, on stage 49 again. Thanks for being on the show, Amadio. Oh, yeah. It's nice to be on here, too. Absolutely. So tell me about yourself, your clans, and your tribal affiliation. Um, well, yeah, my name is Amadio, like you said, and then I'm Navajo, and I only know two of my clans, so it's Tashitni, Ashitni, and I do not know the third one. That's okay. But, well, that's cool because I'm Tachini as well, so we're brothers. Oh, yeah, that's, that's nice to know. <laughs> right on. So um, tell me about uh, how you started freestyle dancing. How I started? It yep. was like in, um, I believe, uh, high school, like at the very beginning. Back then, like, I always, like, had this, like, thing where I wanted to, uh, like, start, like, I wanted to be, like, a rapper or a singer or something. Like, some do with, like, being on stage, but. I did like not have the talent or like even a voice for any of that stuff. And then and out of nowhere, like some friends introduced me to some tutting, like it's called tutting. It's like a type of dancing that has to do with like hands and you just play around with that. And after I figured I could like do it with my body and that's another dance style called animation. Once I got introduced to that, it was another way for me to express my, just my passion for music and all that. And gave me another way to, to express on stage too. So it's pretty much how I got into that. Did a couple of talent shows, got noticed, and after that, started doing big performances. So, tell me about some of the highlights. Where have you performed? Some of the venues. Um, I've I've just I've performed a lot, like a lot of colleges a, a lot, and then uh, I've, I've performed over at UVU one time, and that was a. At the governor, um, the governor's summit. So there was like a lot of governors, mayors, and senators of Utah that were over there. I was performing at, and then mm -hmm. I performed at the Gathering of Nations in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Like uh, this will be my fourth year over there, and yeah, stuff like that. Okay, so how side places too? Like, uh huh. So how did you decide to? Do you have to audition to perform on stage forty nine, or how, talk me talk me about that process? Uh, yeah, you, like, it's, it's, it's the thing, you just audition, and, and my first year, like, I didn't really think I was going to make it, like, I just sent the video in, because, um, uh, my family wanted me to give it a try, so I gave it a try, and then I got the spot, and after that, like, they've always, like, uh, liked me over there, because I always, like, I, I do pretty good over there, like, I uh, get a lot of, like, performing stuff over there, mm -hmm. so it's pretty nice. So initially, did you have to submit a video to, to be noticed to get the audition? Yeah. Nice. And the only reason I'm asking that, just in case uh, any of the listeners want to be featured or to to perform there, that way they know the process to, uh, to being on the stage uh, at Gathering of Nations. Uh, so explain what freestyle animation dancing is. It's like um, it has to do with like isolation, and, like a lot of stuff. Um, people know it, like um, when you dance like dubstep music or like trap music or electrical music. So it's pretty much like a, a lot of robotic movement and a lot of like stuff like that. I would say. So you just sit there and like think, and then I like to like incorporate like chairs and hats and do other tricks and like you can pretty much add add a lot into it. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, but uh, a lot of people do it to, like, electro music, but <clears throat> I never really danced electro music because, like, I danced, like, music. I want to, like, some I would, like, prefer singing or, like, rapping to or, like, some, some that, like, 
um, I could feel, you know, and that's stuff like I could like really express my dancing with and makes it easier for me to like figure out what, like, how I want to incorporate or choreograph it. Mm -hmm. So did you, uh, do you have any formal dance training? Um, <clears throat> I took, a uh, just dance conditioning and stuff, but I've, I've never taken any classes for it. So you're self-taught? Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. So do you teach classes to students uh, on how to, to uh, do freestyle animation dancing? Um, <clears throat> I've tried a couple times. It's just like um, I never really have the time for the um, make any time for that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And how important is uh, staying fit and exercising to the da your dancing? It, it's honestly a lot like I like to be a pretty lazy person but like when it comes to like big performances like I have to go on like I have to like make sure I'm like really like fit and like my endurance and everything's up so this like right now like just performing for this I mean like preparing myself for this performance I have to be on a, a, a low calorie diet no carbs I go to the gym at least two to three times a day I, I do a lot of cardio and working out and stuff and I just got to make sure I eat healthy and do all this. And it's, 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 it's really hard, I guess. Like, I don't know. It's, it takes a lot of commitment to do. So how many hours a day do you dance? Um, I, I, I practice pretty much like throughout the day. Like I'll just be sitting down, playing with my hands, figuring out what's going on. And then if I'm just standing around, just move, be moving my feet. So it's like a 24-hour thing from what I believe. Nice. So how did you learn about this uh, particular form of dancing? Um, I met some friends in high school and like they, they were pretty cool. Like um, they, like they're the ones who taught me how to like use my hands for tutting. And then I like got into it. So I'd always play with my hands for like a lot. And I was sitting there really learning that stuff, paying attention, just practicing, coming up with things and being a little creative with that. And I like met one of my friends. He did like a full body wave, like where he brought a wave from his hand all the way down to his feet, and that really like like blew my mind. And I wanted to learn it. Once I learned that, I figured I out like I could do like cutting with my arms, which are called king cuts, and after that incorporate it with my body, and then like do like robotic movements with my head, and like so many things that came into it, like that like led up to like the way I dance. Mm -hmm. So. Whenever you dance, is there a message you're trying to convey with your dancing and the style that you dance? Like, um, <clears throat> just like, uh, I don't know, hard work and everything, like, will pretty much get you somewhere, and just don't let anybody else tell you <clears throat> not, um, or just not, not, not to bring you down, from what I'm trying to say. Because a lot of people used to always make fun of me for my dancing, and I got a family member that made fun of me for it. People made fun of me for it. And, like, <clears throat> now I do a lot of performances around, and people, like, really enjoy my dancing a lot now. It was worth all of them. Nice. So I actually know what you're talking about. Uh, my wife and I, we listen to a lot of electric dance music, EDM and house and techno, but I actually have students. Uh, I'm a high school principal, but... I have students that, that do the type of dancing that you do, and, you know, it's pretty popular with the, uh, the youth this day and age, um, and I think that's, that's the thing that's powerful uh, about, about what you're doing. So were you automatically good at freestyle dancing, or did you just practice a lot? I just, I just practice a lot. Like, like I was doing every day. Like, that's what, that's what people would, like, make fun of me about at school, too, is because I, I, I would, like, literally be in class just playing with my hands, doing that, dancing around. We'd be like talking all in a circle. I'd just be over there dancing, and yeah, like I don't know, it was just like um, something I did. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even notice. I would be right. That's true, and I think that's the thing. There's there's different learning styles, and it seems like your learning style is through through movement. Um, so whenever you look at your dancing and what you've been through you know, the ups and downs, uh, do you see similarities be between dancing and, and life? Um, dancing is like, because I'm not really like a, a much of a talker when it comes to 
just like a lot of things, it's like letting like emotions out and everything. Man, I think that's one way that helps me is like with, with through dance. Cause like if I feel something, like I'll, I'll let it out through like a, just like by performing. Like people could see that. Like when they see me perform, like I actually put like heart, heart and everything to it. And it's actually like helped me like get through a lot of things. Honestly, like stressed out and stuff. And yeah, I, I feel like dancing really helped me out a lot in life. Nice, that's amazing. And talk with me about the mental aspects of dancing. Uh, the what? The mental aspects. Like, you, I mean, you have to have a straight mind to do it, and you have to be clear to do it. Am I correct? Yeah, that, that, that's a lot of things, because it takes a lot of focus just to learn things, because there's stuff like isolation, where you know, it's kind of like being a mind, where you're, like, hold and stuff, and, like, you have to, like, really pay attention, and it takes, like, a lot of, like, body control, mm -hmm. like, muscle control, and there's points where you have to like learn how to like shake your body at certain points and things and stop and just like <clears throat> really like make sure you're going along with the beat too. It takes a lot of thinking effort from what I believe and like a lot of like process and just like learn how to like move your fingers, like doing waves and yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty like weird. Right. So do you do a lot, a lot of visualization? Yeah, there's the, I do a lot of that because, like, um, it just depends, like, what I have to, like, chore choreograph into something. Like, if you if there's, like, um, a part of a song where, like, it has, like, a really, like, high, high part, like, you have to, like, probably open your hand more or open both of them or do something. And you really got to, like, sit there and think about, like, what you want to do at that thing that, at the same time, make it different from each performance. Mm -hmm. So prior to going on uh, stage to perform, do you go through and think about all your moves? Do you have a routine you follow? Um, I have like part of a routine when I go perform. Like I only like focus on like the big parts of what I want to like actually like do. But between those, like it's pretty much like I just go off my mind with that, and I freestyle those. But like I plan at least like maybe like like five to ten moves inside of a song that I'm about to do, and then the rest of it I I just put it in while I'm performing. Just makes it like a lot more different. So, and on a, you know, a typical song is about three minutes and thirty seconds. How long are your uh, routines? Um, it just depends on like what what I do or how I talk. Like I. I um, I, I um I could do like a, like a good like fifteen minutes like like with the, with the routine and then. Wow! So talk you so you dance fifteen minutes straight and then then you finally get a breather or. Yeah, like um, like they'll be like, oh um, do like I'll do like one song and after that like talk for a little bit and do this about um i could probably go for like a good 20 minutes and people will be interested i just don't want to go too long with dancing like on a whole routine because then like it'll probably like get like tiring to the viewers so how do you engage the audience you said that you talk in between oh just, just let, like pretty much like let them know like what i how i started dancing and stuff like that and so why you, i dance like, like so Talk with me about why you dance. <clears throat> why I dance? Yeah. It's just something I've always enjoyed doing, and it's given me <clears throat> reasons to actually, like, live my dream. Like, like, live my dream from when I wanted to sing and rap and all that and be on stage, and it's actually giving me that, it's giving me that standing point where I can actually, like, be on stage and perform in a different way and I feel like pe like people just I don't know give like will give up too easy at one one thing because they can't do a certain amount of things and I feel like there's other ways around the where you can still live that dream and I figured out a way that I could do that that's one thing I love about performing so whenever you're performing and talking do you talk with the audience about some of the struggles you've overcome 
yeah, <clears throat> I've, I've, I've been through some struggles and there's some things that dancing has helped me with through that. Talk with me about some of those struggles. I was an alcoholic for a little bit and I would always just, um, I pretty much worry about myself, didn't really care about any of my family. Like I, I, I'd always put that first, like when I was younger. And then I got into dancing and that helped me like keep me away from it because it gave me like reasons to like more, more reasons to stay sober and like um, be, be healthy. Cause it was a, it was either like, I could just like let this, like let alcohol ruin everything for me. And I didn't want that in my life anymore. And so it really helps me like just dance is like really helps me be healthy and want to be a better person and help other people out in my life. Wow, that's powerful. I like that. And I actually really like that you, in between your dancing routine, you talk with the audience and engage them and talk with them about your struggles because I think that's where you make that connection with people. And then, they, you know, kids and our youth can definitely see that, you know, if you've overcome these struggles, then they could probably do that as well. And I think that's the power of um, what you're doing. So have you thought about auditioning for America's Got Talent? I gave America's Got Talent a try one time, and, like, they really liked my act, but they said I would probably um, have a, um, that I should try out for So You Think You Dance because they think that would fit, fit my um, talent a lot more. But I've just never had the time to go and try that out, too. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, so how important is your culture? I wasn't really raised, like, <clears throat> like traditionally, but I, um, I've been, like, learning, like, more and more about it lately from like since I was in high school and then I would, I'm, I don't know like, family members always tell me things and a lot of people always talk about like traditional stuff and I always take the time to listen I always want to learn more and there's, just, there's always more to learn from what I from what I can see I'm always learning something new every time I talk, sit down and talk to somebody about it nice so I usually ask this question about what native non-natives need to know who don't live on the reservation so like whenever you're living there in cedar city utah what do people non-natives typically ask you about navajo life uh, one thing they ask me is like if i get like free money or stuff like that or if like they pay for different things and that's like one of the big things they ask me and they ask like I get like free housing or free houses or stuff or I don't know. Do they ask if you get casino weird. money? Yeah, yeah, that's one thing they'd say. I, I like uh, pretty much. I'm like Navajos don't really get that much. <laughs> they don't get anything from that. Right. So then to take a spin off of that, so natives that don't, you know, what, what do what do natives, non-natives, need to know about about you and and your lifestyle? Um, most of them don't really like know much about it. At the same time, I don't really share really much of that information with, and, like I don't share my social media or anything like that. And this will actually be my first year actually, actually sharing my social media at, at a big performance. So hopefully, I'll, I want to see how that goes. But most of the time, I always just keep it to myself and just like talk to my like just my friends know about it. Besides so that, it's pretty chill. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a promo promo video on your social media? Um, I got some old videos on there. Uh, I'm supposed to be making some videos in the next like um, I'm supposed to be making two videos within the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So, one of them should be coming up soon. Nice. And do you uh, DJ your own stuff? Do you mix your own uh, music? I, I, I usually do that, but this um, this year we're actually having um, some people mix some music for me. Nice. That's awesome. Is there uh, anything else uh, you would like to share? There's really nothing else besides my social media and stuff. Okay. What about um, if you had to do this all over again, right? You had the experience you have right now, the knowledge, 
and you had to do it all over in the first two weeks what would you do over again i would just make a lot more smarter choices from and pay attention and just notice that a lot of people would want like there's a lot of people who would like kill or like give anything to <clears throat> have the opportunities i have and that's one thing i learned is because i wasn't really paying attention to how much like i was not really appreciating like what i have and like what <clears throat> the opportunities i have too and i really just pushed that aside and i probably could have like done a lot more than what like i have been doing but i just really didn't care or any put any thought in, into it and i just treated it like it was just like nothing now now like i'm actually putting more heart into it and recognizing that i should be proud and lucky to be able to do performing and just be the entertainer i am nowadays nice i like that so how does it feel being viewed as a leader i mean you have a following people look up to you you speak in front of people uh, you dance and you perform how does that feel it feels weird like it was really hard in the very beginning because i was like one of the shyest people you would ever meet like i would not talk to anybody i always kept to myself i barely even had friends back then and then just getting this and being on stage in front of people and having to talk to people, do interviews, and it was like one of the weirdest things. And it was something I'd like to really get used to. And it's still, I, like, I believe I'm still getting used to it. Right. So do you feel like you're in the uh, public spotlight? Yeah. Yeah. Like you have to watch what you do and... Um be careful what you portray on social media. Yeah, that, that's how I feel a lot. So, I don't know. And that, that's why I was scared to, like, give out my social media stuff because, like, I don't know, like, I feel like I would, like, be more worried about, like, what I post or what I do. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. But <clears throat> so, uh, do you have a plug? Anybody you want to plug or do a plug for your upcoming performances? I have like um, a lot of followers on my Snapchat. That's where people like pretty much see what like what I do through my daily life and all that. Because I, I like I do a daily Snapchat vlog pretty much. And yeah, everybody always finds out stuff and just through there. And then my Facebook's so what where I put all the dates and everything. What I do. And you're on Instagram as well. Yeah, I'm on Instagram too. Okay. And what are your handles so people can check out your content? My Snapchat is um, Amadio P, so it's A M A D E P. Then my Facebook is Amadio Wanico with a dot in between A M A D E O, period W A U N E K A. And my Instagram is Amadio underscore Wanico. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, what was your Snapchat handle? Um, A M A D E P. I got about six thousand followers on there. Okay. And people really enjoy my content on there. All right. Cool. Uh, they can check you out at Gathering of Nations, uh, Stage Forty Nine. Um, yeah, Friday and Saturday, twenty seventh and twenty eighth. And you're already booked, and you're set to go, huh? Yeah, I got six performances over there, and I always do. I always end up doing a couple more too. That's awesome. And how many times a year do you usually perform? Uh, um, <clears throat> just depends on the year. Like last year, I, I didn't do anything because I was just like focused um, on just myself. So, like I went through like a big tragic time last year. But this year, I have no idea. It depends on after my performance because I'm actually like just barely getting back into performing again. Oh, nice. Right on, man. Well, hey, we're all set. Um, if you don't have anything else to share, but uh, if you could send me a picture, a background picture for the back of the podcast so that people can put uh, an image or a picture of you to the voice, okay? Okay, so and, just send you a picture of me? Yeah, yeah, you can choose whichever one. If someone else took it, just let me know if I need to do a photo credit on it. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Keep up the uh, good work. I'm serious. There's a lot of kids out there that 
that follow the type of dancing you do and it's, it's pretty powerful i mean i can't do that stuff but but you know you have to have some good fluid motion and, and understanding of your body and how it moves and that's the, i think that's the power of it and i know people always say well why do you interview these people that they're not leaders and i'm like well yeah they are because the youth look up to them right you like you just said you have six thousand followers on snapchat you know you have a platform that you you know, talk with people and impact them and influence them and encourage them and do all of these things, uh, you know, through social media. And I think that's the power of, of what you do. So keep up the good work and, uh, you know, keep inspiring our youth out there to, to dance and to, and to perform. I mean, it takes a lot of confidence to be up on stage in front of hundreds of people. Would you agree? Yeah. It does take a lot of confidence. <laughs> right. So so keep up the good work, and, and uh, if you could, uh, just send me that information, okay? All right. So, sounds good. All right, all right brother. All right. Well, we'll talk to you later, okay? All right, man. You have a good day. Yeah, you too. We'll talk to you later. Bye. If you like this episode, please go to iTunes and give us a review and comment on our Facebook page. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We appreciate all the support you all give us. If you know of anyone that we can interview, please message us on Facebook. Thank you.